This is N2LEM with another quick video clip. Okay, here is, well, uh, I'm actually in the middle of doing a couple of things. Here is the FT-1000D. And um, this particular radio I purchased on eBay. It's one of the last production models. I uh, had an issue with, um, the only issue with the radio is that um, after you would turn the radio on, uh, the, the frequency display, the readout, would be fine. And then after about a half hour, uh, all the, the display will all disappear. All the lights would go off and only one digit would be bright on the entire display. So I had a parts, um, I have several parts radios and I, I pulled out a display board from another radio. I've been waiting to do this for, well, I've had this radio for over a year. I just haven't gotten into it. And I replaced it with the uh, older display board and uh, the radio functions fine. No issues. I had it playing for several hours. There are some differences in the design of the newer display board. I'm going to see if I could troubleshoot this. Um, and I will probably uh, put that in my um, in the notes on this. But uh, the, another reason, I'm going to be keeping this radio open. I'm actually going to be closing it up. I'm going to do the Mars cap, but I want to show you where the Mars cap mod is um, before I do it. And, um, I figured, you know, while I was working on the display board, I might as well do the Mars cap in the radio while it's opened. I'll probably add the 500 Hertz CW filter. And I, um, um, I picked up from, uh, Adam Faber just posted on the, uh, internet in the FT 1000 D, uh, groups IO that he had a in-rad, um, tuna uh kit which uh actually changes the speed of the of the vfo for both the uh main vfo and the sub so it's the inrad tuna upgrade kit long long discontinued but it's basically a plug and play um board and um he actually just mailed that out to me today so i'm probably going to leave the radio on the bench um and then install the tuner and then and then really close it back up while I continue testing it. But let me go ahead and show you. So when you drop the front panel, you want to be very, very careful um, when you are when you are removing. You do not need to remove the screws, the three screws that are here that hold the, the, uh, the bracket to the uh, control unit because the control unit is actually where you're going to do the mod for the uh, extended transmit uh, the for uh, Mars. And there are also there are three screws on the bottom of the panel. Uh, on the side of the panel, there is an upper screw and a lower screw. You just lo loosen up the lowest screw, remove the top screws on both sides, and then you want to gently lift up the, the uh, front of the radio, but, you know, after the front panel. And you could see I did that on both sides. And then what you could do is you could literally let the, the front panel swing down and then tighten up the screws uh, just so you, the, the, the two screws that you're um, swiveling it on so it doesn't detach from the radio if you're hanging it off the bench like I'm doing. Or you could probably put padding, but I have it off the, off the workbench. You could see how it's uh, sitting. It's actually not even touching. It's because it's, like I said, I tightened up the screws in it and it's... Uh, just about in a 45 degree uh, right angle. Um, uh, 90. But anyway, um, you could see when I just I just marked the uh, the cables when I pulled them out. These marks were on the board when I guess when uh, the gentleman who had the rig before me potted it out and he I guess he uh, pulled apart. And you could also see if you look closely. You can see he stuck a screwdriver in to loosen them up. You, you really, in this particular radio, you can do that, but not do it to the extent that he did. Um, I had no problems gently taking the cables and gently wiggling them out, and they came out fine uh, out of the new board. I'm probably going to end up um, trying to repair this 
uh, board because like I said, there are some circuit changes. There's a transistor added. Also, uh, the, the I believe the transmit LED and maybe that's SWR warning indicator are red LEDs on the latest uh, revision board. There is also a switching transistor that is mounted um, in series with this particular metal film resistor and then there's a, a wire that goes under the board, it comes out and it's actually, um, comes right up there and it's soldered to a point. So I'm gonna look in the service manual to see if there's anything, uh, or if I could find a revision of the service manual that handles the, the 2000 uh, year series. This could be a 2001 or a 2002, I'm really not sure. But anyway, so when you drop it, getting back to the Mars cap, this uh, cover just pops out of the actual, uh, uh, you know, it's an RF shield. You could see the version six ROM that's right there. I don't know, uh, I'm assuming that that was put in um, from the factory. And right here, JP1, 2, and 3, and you want to remove the ball of solder or the jumper right on uh, JP3. And then reset the radio. There's a backup switch. You can find this all on the internet, but let me come in here with the screwdriver, small tip, and you can see right there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, desolder that uh, jumper. That solder ball. Now this could have been done before because there's some rosin around it, so maybe somebody restored it. Uh, you can see maybe there's a little bit of, uh, but there you go. So that's what you want to do. JP3, according to what's on the internet and in the books. And then you just uh, reinstall the cover. There are no screws that hold the RF shield cover in. It just uh, drops right back in its spot, and you could, you know, it um, it mounts inside. The little divots go in. You could squeeze it, slide it in. You may want to wipe it down so it'll uh, won't corrode from your fingerprints. And that's basically it. So this is N two L E N, uh, saying best seven three. Uh, also, hmm, I don't know if I could do it, but let me see if I can come around here. And see, show you the serial number. There you go. So let me get in here, and I'm gonna tell, talk to you a little bit about the serial number. Let's see if I can, if I could, zoom in on that so you could see it. But the latest and greatest 1000 Ds uh, that were built, manufactured after the year 2000, either 2000, 2001, or 2002, had a paper serial number tag. And uh, they all, I hope you could see that. It has the designation D, and they all started with the 07 uh, number. So uh, that's how you tell. If you have the metal tag, you're not over, you know, you're, I think you're as far, uh, the vintage would be, the latest would be 1999. Anything 2000 to 2002 has this white serial tag with the designation FT-1000D and the serial number series would be seven a zero with the seven in it. They're all the same. Mommy, he's doing something. And that's basically it. So with that, I'll say best 73. This is N2LEN on the Mars cap for the FT-1000D.